Hi, thanks for being with me. Hope you're having a great day and the Holy Spirit is blessing you with the peace that passes understanding. And you know, just because we believe in eternity and just because we think God is totally behind us and loves us doesn't mean we don't need to try to make our world a better place in every way we can, both in the human world by doing good deeds to help our friends and neighbors succeed and rise above their poverty, but also we really need to think about taking care of the earth and making a difference. And as you know, there's almost a litany of worry and discussion about the issue of rising CO2 levels and the potential for climate change. I don't know what you feel about this issue, and I personally have a lot of questions about exactly how the future will uphold. As you know from listening to me previously, I have kind of a mantra to expect the unexpected. We don't know what the future holds, and there's uncertainties that abound. We've gone in this growing season from an excess of rain and cold weather in the spring, which has delayed planting crops and even made some farmers unable to plant crops. Over 10 million acres of crops haven't been able to be planted because the conditions were too wet. So we're facing that and we now we've gone in Dallas, Texas, it's just burning up. Super hot, no rain, no rain in sight. And we've gone from a glut of rain, wet ground, a real mess, to now we've got cracks in the ground, the trees are wilting, and the grass is burning. Even with the sprinklers, it's hard to keep your grass green. So Mother Nature is unpredictable and unknown, and you can transition from one end of an extreme to another in just a couple of weeks, as we went from a glut of rain in June to now approaching a drought in July with, like I said, no rain in the forecast. What does that mean? It means that we need to trust God foremost, but we also need to prepare for uncertainty. And one of the things we've done as a world and as a modern society is really take advantage of our farmers and take advantage of most particularly the soil, abusing the soil and causing soil erosion and a loss of carbon from the soil into the atmosphere due to tillage, chemical fertilization practices, and the loss of minerals in the soil to support soil life. So today I'm gonna to talk about something a little different and something that is really positive. You know, one of my things that I like to think about the most is positive solutions, things that are win, win, win. Everything is going great. When, you know, you feed a helping needy person, you get a sense of joy out of it. They get vital nutrition and the war goes on. But what about our whole society? What about the fact that our food has become demineralized and low in nutrients? Do you realize that if you ate one apple from 1965, today you would have to eat five apples to get the same nutrition and minerals that you got out of that one apple back in 1965. Now you have to eat five. Why is that? Because our soil has gradually become demineralized through the rain, through the farming practices, and just mother nature at work gradually consuming the minerals in the soil and having them leach out into the sea or be eroded in soil erosion. I've been involved with this organization for decades, but kind of drifted away from it in my professional life. I was had a commercial farm and really wanted to improve my soils and did comprehensive soil testing and added the vital minerals that were needed and produced really healthy, good crops and great cattle that um, was very satisfying. But this technology is a little broader and more long lasting. And what I'm talking about is remineralization, which is to add the nutrients needed in the soil by adding finely ground rock dust to the soil to remineralize the soil, simulating what a glacier does when a glacier grinds up all the old topsoil and all the 
rock and chews it up into rock powder and then the natural biology of life that's so prevalent in the soil converts that rock dust into new fertile soil. That's what the blessing of America has been, has been the American Midwest, which is entirely glacially created soil that's rich in minerals and nutrients. The problem is it's been badly degraded over 150 years of active soil mining instead of soil preservation by people that plowed the ground, allowed the soil to wash away out into the Mississippi River and down into the Gulf of Mexico. So we have abused our soil, our legacy that we were given by God. The God-given gifts that we have had have not been managed well and preserved. And we face a crisis worldwide of soil degradation. So remineralize the earth. Remineralize.org is an organization that is doing research and promoting remineralization as a solution not only to the hunger and desertification that goes on around, but actually reversing CO2. You see, for the last 200 years, really since man started agriculture, we've been venting carbon out of the soil into the atmosphere, and we've been venting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere from burning plants and degrading the environment and causing natural processes to release carbon to the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide. I don't know if you know that termites, for instance, are one of the big creators of CO2 that's actively decomposing wood and other things, wood that's been cut down, unhealthy trees. So restoring the vitality to the soil creates healthy plants that resist degradation and allows the vital soil life, microbes and fungus, and other creatures in the earth. And they are creatures, all things are God's creatures, even if they're single-celled or amazing, bizarre little creatures that live in the dark and live off rocks, that live in the soil and create humus and vital compounds that help life exist. So today we're gonna to talk about remineralizing the earth and we're going to talk about this very comprehensive book, Geotherapy. And Geotherapy is a comprehensive set of essays that really spell out a positive path to reversing carbon dioxide buildup in our atmosphere without giving up our cars, without going to an extreme change to our society, just by remineralizing the earth, revitalizing it, and doing what the Mayans did by incorporating biological carbon, the carbon that's left when you partially burn wood or grass, you get that charcoal-y looking material that doesn't burn easy and doesn't biodegrade, lasts forever, so it's a way to store carbon in the soil. But carbon has a wonderful property in that it has a strong attraction to other elements. It serves as a sponge to soak up nutrients and prevent them from being leached out of the soil. So by adding biological carbon, so called biochar, to the soil, we can really change our soil from being a leaching, depleting quantity to being a preserving and holding and building environment where it gets richer every year instead of worse. Isn't that a wonderful, positive thing to think about? Imagine the earth getting better every year instead of us feeling like it's getting worse and like we're depleting it. The problem with depletion is eventually you get down to the point where you don't have enough. The great thing about building is you have more every year. You have better soil, you can grow more. You have better crops, you have more trees, less forest fires. The world is getting better every day and that's what I'm really fired up about is let's make the world better every day. Now how can you get involved? Well one thing you can do is go to their website and donate, read up on what they're doing. You can find a link to this book on the website to order it. It's an expensive technical book. I've read it and let me tell you there's a lot of data in here. This is probably not a book for people who want to be lightweights. This is for people that really want to dig in and know the details of what does it mean to remineralize the earth and what are the results. They got case studies, test plots, 
and demos that they've done. You can learn all you can. There's a bunch of great articles and other information on the website, links to people that have rock dust available, and you can learn a lot just by going to the website, but love for you to buy the book and give it to a science teacher. Give it to somebody that you think really will dig into it and learn. If you know somebody who's interested in geology, this would make a great present. It's an expensive book, but I'd love for you to support them. Really love for you to support them with a donation. It's a very small organization. It doesn't have the sex appeal of people making strident calls for huge, horrible changes in our society that the activists who really are not about living in abundance but about forcing people to live a life of scarcity. I'm not a fan of scarcity. I'm a fan of abundance. I'm a fan of growth instead of depletion. And I think that's vital. You know, we have a situation in our country that we have been blessed with technology and geology and research that has produced a tremendous glut of natural gas in this country. Many people say, oh, natural gas is bad. It's a global warming gas. We need to not use it. Methane is a really fantastic fuel. It's the lowest carbon hydrocarbon there is. Of all the fuels, ranging from natural gas being the absolutely lowest in carbon of any hydrocarbon, because there's only one carbon and four hydrogens. So for every time you burn a pound of natural gas, you get two pounds of water and less than one pound of carbon dioxide, because of course the oxygens add weight to the natural gas as it burns. So we can really make a difference in our carbon level by really moving towards using more natural gas. If we have a dual prong approach of cutting our carbon dioxide emissions through efficiency and through more use of natural gas, phasing out coal, we can really make a difference in the amount of carbon that's going to the atmosphere, but the real solution is to remineralize the soil, revitalize the soil, and turn it into a carbon sponge that's just soaking up carbon dioxide out of the air and re actually reducing carbon dioxide in the air as opposed to where it is today. We can take it back. Many of the experts in this book say that we could take it back to pre-industrial levels, the levels of 150 years ago, which would be so beneficial for our environment Regardless of what the total effects of CO2 are, we are seeing hot weather, we are seeing wild disturbances weather. There's a, you know, a balance in the earth between the cold regions and the warm regions. More warmth creates more violence, bigger storms, bigger activity, so more snowfall. We just need to take care of the earth and we need to take care of our fellow man. One of the great things about really remineralizing Places like Central America and Africa is we are faced with an exodus of people from these areas because they're areas that are in poverty and depletion. The soils are so depleted they barely grow vegetation. Remineralization and revitalization of the soil will allow those people to have prosperous lives and not be piled up at our border trying to get in because life is so bad in Guatemala or El Salvador or those other countries where the minerals in the soil are so depleted they almost don't exist. Amazing responses in those soils to rock dust. The problem with rock dust is it's not an expensive patented product. It's not a product that you make through an elaborate chemical process. It's made by grinding up rocks and spreading them on the soil. Nobody can patent it. Nobody can own it. Nobody can make a big margin. It's not like manufacturing a chemical fertilizer where you have a plant and you take something that's very low cost and turn it into something that's very high cost. This is natural, earth balance, friendly, environmentally friendly, totally non-toxic, and long lasting, but it doesn't have that sex appeal business-wise of I'm gonna make a ton of money grinding up rock and putting the dust on the land. 
you're going to see the increased productivity. The individual farmer, the individual landowner is going to see that increased productivity. But it's basically a fairly low margin business. It needs support. Remineralize.org needs your donation. There's a donate button on the website. You can get lots of information from it and really make a difference. We can really turn the world around with the focus on the right path. There's some powerful stories in Geotherapy, the book. There's a bunch of wonderful information on the Remineralize.org website, and you can really be empowered. I don't know about you, but I get kind of dragged down when I hear people talking about super expensive things that involve drastic changes in America's lifestyle, trying to make radical change, you know, I don't know about you, but I don't particularly like seeing acres and acres of solar panels scattered across the landscape. <coughs> and anybody that's been living knows that the sun doesn't always shine. We haven't really made a real conclusive solution to providing good 24-7 reliable power with what most people are proposing as solutions in the renewable energy space. I'm a big fan of something entirely different that's being used right now on a small scale and has the potential to grow excellent to meeting our energy needs, and that is biologically produced natural gas or methane, which can be produced from animal waste, human waste, food waste, biomass, meaning plants and trees and all sorts of things can be digested by anaerobic bacteria to make methane gas, which is what you use to heat your home, what's used to generate electricity. So we can have that production lasting 24-7, rain or shine, snow or ice or cold or hot. The biogas digesters are proven technology that's been used for years and can radically be expanded to help be our renewable energy of the future. What isn't great about using something that's being wasted right now to produce vital energy? And what is more attractive to look at than a beautiful field of grass or vegetation or trees versus a big windmill whooshing away killing birds or a field of solar panels that only generates power for six hours a day what do you do with the rest of the day? It's up to you, buddy. You got to find some power somewhere, which means a fossil fuel power plant at this time. So biogas has the potential to be a real, fantastic, sustainable, life-enhancing way to have renewable energy that works with our existing infrastructure, works with existing power plants, existing pipelines to transport this energy to population centers. You know, one of the problems we have, everybody says, oh, it'd be great. We'll put a bunch of solar panels out in the desert. There's no way to get the power from the desert to New York City. What are you going to do? And the power only shines in the desert for six, seven hours a day at full strength. The rest of the day, it goes like this. Power starts out low in the morning, goes up middle of the day. Everybody knows how hot it is in the middle of the day. And then it drops or drafts off. Everybody knows it gets cool in the afternoon and the evening, the sun's not so damn hot because the solar radiation goes down. So you really only get about six hours a day of peak solar power. The rest of the day you're on your own and guess what? It's first thing in the morning when everybody wants to get up, make their coffee, make their breakfast and get underway for the day and then when they come home from work, you darn sure want power when you come home from work. Well the way to get that is renewable biogas. The great news is you may think all oh, this is kind of subjects all over the place. Well, remineralization and revitalization of the world really latches in to increasing the production of biomass, organic material, trees, plants, vegetation that can be used to make biogas. So you have to have the two working together. We can't produce enough biomass and material feedstock to make biogas right now because we have so many acres that are so depleted and demineralized. There are exciting things that can be done. Remineralize.org is a 
organization that's really trying to make a difference. I've known about it since its formation, been away from it for a while. I saw a documentary that was a typical alarmist documentary, but they talked about remineralization and biochar in it. They didn't really give it full credit. They didn't really stand behind it and say, this is the solution, folks. This is the solution. <coughs> it's amazing how simple it is. Healthy soil, healthy plants, healthy people, healthy world. Unbelievable. Think about how depleted your food supply is because the minerals in the soil have been depleted ever since the end of the last ice age over 10,000 years ago. That's right. It took 5,000 years to build the soils to their optimum level that happened 5,000 years ago, what's called the climatic optimum. And they've been going downhill ever since, and man has been contributing to the process, but natural processes of rain and erosion and whatnot are contributing as well that gradually demineralize the soil and pull it down. So we can make a difference. Go to remineralize.org, donate today, read up on it, get involved, reach out to us, and we'll be glad to visit with you about it. If you have a group you'd like us to share with, if you know people that are you think would be interested, please forward the TV show to them. You can go to my website, David Munson, insightswithdavid.com and share the information and get people to watch this show, forward it to people. That's the best thing you can do for me is donate to causes that I believe in and I'm passionate about and share the information with others because information is powerful. Most of your friends and people you know, influential people you know, don't know about remineralization don't know there's a really positive solution to the so-called carbon dioxide crisis that people talk about as if it could be the end of our civilization. I don't know whether it's the end or not, but I know it's something we can do something about, and in the process of doing something about it, we can also make the world a heck of a lot better place. I don't know about you, but every time I drive out west and see the desolate, near desert conditions of the American Southwest. It makes me sad. I love to see productive fields. I love to see plants growing healthily. I don't like to see our national forests dying like they are out west, full of dead trees that have been attacked by animals because they're demineralized and sick and not healthy. Bugs don't attack healthy, well plants. They attack sick plants. They're parasitic. They go after the weak, just like a predator goes after the weak. You don't attack the strong, you attack the weak. Weak trees, weak plants come under attack by parasites and various diseases and our result is we have tons of dead wood. We need a national program to take that dead wood out of the forest, grind it up, make biochar out of it, burning it in a low atmosphere, a low oxygen environment where it only partially burns and leaves behind that vital biochar which is a sponge for nutrients and will hold those nutrients in the soil instead of them washing down to the Gulf of Mexico, creating these horrible toxic red tides, algae blooms, and all sorts of other things that really make the ocean not a healthy place. So the good news about remineralization is that it works on the land great, but it also works in the ocean. If you're worried about a coral reef, if you're worried about the state of our fisheries, remineralizing the oceans is the next step that really needs to be taken to restore our oceans to vitality and a rich and expanding fishery stream. You know, fish are part of a food chain and the first thing in the food chain are the tiny little algae and plankton that photosynthesize solar energy and turn it into nutrient rich food that the smaller creatures can eat and then the little bigger fish eat the little fish and it goes on up the chain till you get to a big tuna. And I want to see more food in the ocean. I want to see our oceans not becoming a desert devoid of life, but being vital and rich and able to sustain humanity for a long time. I hope you've enjoyed this show and can really get excited about making a positive difference. Everyone can make a difference. There is information on the remineralize.org website that has resources where you can buy rock dust for your home garden to help make your garden nutrient rich and also to help restore, turn your yard into a carbon sink 
that's absorbing carbon dioxide back into the soil and building a reserve for the future. We can all enjoy the idea. I love the idea of desert fighting, of knocking these deserts back, of seeing fertility and lushness return to these environments that are so depleted, like so much of Africa is really demineralized and really in bad shape. So I've said a lot today, but it's really that simple. Healthy soil, healthy plants, healthy people. And you can make a difference by going to remineralize.org, getting involved, writing your congressman saying, please support research and development. We need to go all out to restore Earth's vitality, to restore our soil so that we have plenty of food, so that we don't go to a situation where there's not enough food. I've, like I said earlier, our growing conditions this year, we could be in a short supply of food this year because of this hot, dry weather and a predicted early frost that may sharply drop corn production. Something to think about. We need to be sustainable. We need to be prepared for whatever comes along because this isn't heaven. And, but we can make it closer to heaven by really loving our neighbors and ourselves. And one way to love our neighbors and ourselves is to make sure that everybody has healthy soil and healthy food and to really go out of our way to say, we don't want to have a situation of scarcity in this world where so many people don't have enough to eat, can't grow enough food because their soil is so infertile. We need to restore that vitality through remineralization using rock dust and natural minerals to make a difference. The geotherapy book, super exciting. In a way, if you're a technical geek and if you really love understanding how complex soil biology is and how wonderful it is. But you don't need to buy the book if you don't feel up to really getting into a hardcore read. Just go to the website, read it on the, all the data that's on it, watch some of the videos, and please donate. They really need funds. This organization operates on a shoestring and has gotten lots of great research done with almost no expenditure of money. So they can use your donation. A dollar goes a long way with remineralize.org. So I hope you've enjoyed this show. I hope you've been moved to learn more. I've rushed through the data, but the truth is there is case study after case study showing that vital mineral rich soil grows great produce that's fertile and rich and absorbs carbon dioxide into the air all the time, into the soil. Have a great day. Please go to the website.